Hi, I'm the interest-free currency engineer, John Termel, and this is another article by Michael Bowens, where he talks about Bernard Leiter's commentaries on the role of business-to-business -business currencies growing up in Europe. Well, the day they link the business-to-business -business currencies with the people-to-people -people let systems and Tausch rings is the day they really go big, and all they have to do is adopt the time standard of money to make that compatibility Michael Bowens, August the 8th, 2009, article, Bernard Leiter on the role of complementary B2B currencies in this crisis. Quote, Japan tried the classical solutions and after five years they stopped believing the economic downturn was a cyclical thing, that it was like all the other ones. That's when they started implementing these structural kind of solutions, which is why Japan is a full-scale laboratory of complementary currencies. However, Japan still haven't gone to scale yet. They're still experimenting. My suspicion is in the next two or three years, Japan will announce 10,000 local currencies or a national B2B currency, and they'll tell the world they've changed their development model. In Europe, we're trying to experiment with taking complementary currencies immediately to scale. By the end of 2010-2011, we hope to have a B2B system that is available at a Eurozone level. B2B must mean business to business, I hope. Excerpt with Belgian monetary reformer Bernard Leiter. And of course, he's never supported Unilet's worldwide global trading, so let's see what he's got to say. Tracy, how can complementary currencies help solve these problems? Bernard, complementary currencies work in addition to existing money rather than replacing existing official money. There are a whole different families of complementary currencies. One of them is local currencies, one is regional currencies, another is functional currencies, another is social purpose currencies, and Termel, I just want to fix the national ones so we don't need all these others. Today, conventional money is supposed to be doing everything. By adding in complementary currencies, you actually get different types of things and different outcomes from different complementary currencies. And if you ran a national currency interest-free like complementary currencies, it would do it all too. If you want to create or bolster a local economy, you can use local currencies to stimulate that kind of outcome. A local currency has been proven effective only for up to 300 to 500 families within a particular part of town. So, the chips work when you've got 300 to 500 families, but when you get 600 families, somehow the chips don't work anymore. Bernard Leader thinking. If you want to help mitigate unemployment, I would recommend regional currencies. Regional currencies could work for a million people. Ah, but the chips wouldn't work for a million and a half people. The purpose there is to create a sense of regional pride and to encourage economic development on a regional level. We have a number of regional currencies operational in Europe. There are 64 projects in Germany, of which 28 are operational and the rest are in a process of launch. There are six projects in France that are now in a pilot stage. Well, they got 300 système d'échange locale lettres in France. They got over 300 Tausch rings in Germany. They got over 300 lettres in England. Over 300 banco de tiempos in Italy. So what's he starting something new for? Why can't he work in what's already there? There are also social purpose currencies. There's one in Japan that people use to trade elderly care. The time dollar system is another in the States. Global currencies can be complementary as well. The Terra is one such example. Tracy, on a bigger level, you've been saying that the Terra and business-to-business, -business, or B2B currencies, could help us navigate this economic crisis we're in. How do you get people to start accepting them? Bernard, the Terra is a subset of business-to-business, -business, and I would recommend implementing first a business-to-business -business when it comes to addressing this crisis. Being optimistic, it would take at least three to five years for the Terra to make a difference. The B2B could be operational in three to six months. Boy, it sure takes a long time to get their chips organized, doesn't it? The prototype of a successful B2B is the Weir system in Switzerland, true, which has been proven to help keep the economy's, uh, uh, country's economy and employment more stable than all its neighbors since it was started in 1934. The B2B keeps the businesses interconnected and trading with each other without borrowing money from banks, cutting the middleman out of the picture which is the real bottleneck. That's right, get money out of the banks. Because the money is not anymore available from the banks as it used to be, period. Tracy, how could we start a B2B currency this quickly? And how could we get it to be a national movement in the U.S.? We, 
we're starting a B2B currency here in Europe. It was just a meeting today at one of the pilot programs in Germany. They're considering calling it the COM for complementary and commercial. One COM equals one euro, and it doesn't have interest. Yay. There are now four pilot projects in gestation in Europe. The idea is to launch the pilot projects independently of each other and then interconnect them in 2010. So why not allow them to start intertrading right now and seeing what's available right now? It would help it grow faster right now. One of the main reasons we can do it so quickly, three months, three years, that's quick, is that there are open source softwares available for free to make it all work. That solves much of the technical problem. And of course, link it to time and they're all compatible anyway. Uh, therefore, the only thing to be done is the social part. Con convincing businesses to be involved. <laughs> when they go broke and people have no money, they'll join. Let me give you an example of how that can be done. Let me give you another one first. In Argentina, when the bank shut down and they had no cash, they had no choice but to accept creditos and start bartering. Uh, so if one of your biggest customers tells you, hey, we're going to buy from you at the condition that we can pay 10% with this new complementary currency, as a supplier, when your biggest customers tell you that, you basically have a choice. You don't have this big customer or you accept 10% payment in comms. Good idea. The pilot projects are the beginning of the process. As we start to interconnect them on the European level through the Eurozone, there will be 16 countries that are using the same currency, all connected by the same software. And if they link to the hour, then they can connect to all the time banks around the world too. One of the key elements is transparency. With the COM system, like Let's, I have the right to see your account before I make a trade with you. In other words, it's self-policing. That will make it very unattractive for the Mafia and anyone else interested in criminal activity. Hey, where's Luigi keep coming up with all that money from? Luigi's got 10,000 hours in his account and he did it on the weekend. Where'd he get that? Anyway, you can implement a business-to-business -business currency with the same pricing structure and the same marketing mechanism and everything else. It simply offers an additional source of funding. The hope and idea is that at some point, at least during a period of crisis, governments, particularly local and civic governments, will accept partial payment of their taxes in business-to-business -business currency, making it acceptable to everybody. I call that the holy grail. When government starts to accept payment of currency in taxes, that currency becomes good for everybody. Tracy, well said, do the B2B currencies stop stupid growth? Bernard, for example, we can have currencies that motivate you to put less carbon in the atmosphere. There are now six cities in Europe that are planning to launch a carbon currency to do just that. Bristol, Dublin, Munich, Rotterdam, Brussels, and Amsterdam. Well, how does it work, says Tracy? It's this different from the cap and trade system we read so much about? Bernard, oh yes. Cap and trade involves basically only corporations and governments. The consumer's not involved. Here we're talking about actually motivating the citizen consumer to get involved. Let's assume that you take the bus or the subway instead of your car. We'll give you credit for the carbon units that you're saving with your ticket. It's all done electronically using a smart card that works much like a standard credit card with its rewards program. You want to go buy a bicycle? You can pay for the bicycle with the carbon credits. If I, or if I install sonar panels in my house, I get carbon credits, which I can then use to take the subway. The way that the U.S. Uh, state governments try to motivate people to buy a hybrid car is that they give you two or three thousand dollars in a tax rebate when you buy a hybrid. You can then use those two or three thousand dollars to go to Hawaii and emit more carbon than you would save in the life of driving that hybrid. So the government has no way of influencing behavior patterns after the first transaction. The carbon currency works only in carbon producing country activities. So you create an, an economy that favors that activity. That's an example of complementary currency that actually encourages smart growth. Tracy, what do you think individuals can do here in the U.S. as we're headed toward an unprecedented crisis? Bernard, if you're a business manager, start a business to business currency. Join a Let's, join a Time Bank, join an hour system, buy some Berkshires, get involved. There are models available. We're not talking theory. It's been done before. And in Europe, we're in the process of doing it again. If you are a mayor or a state governor, obtain the permission to accept such 
business to business currencies in payment of local taxes. You can choose the criteria that makes that currency acceptable for partial payment of taxes. This will provide the most powerful incentive for other businesses to accept that currency and it'll provide you with city and state income that you otherwise wouldn't have. If you're an individual, gather your community and create your community to help build social capital. Start your own lets. In Brazil, the central bank is now helping to launch 150 dual currency banks to solve local problems at the rhythm of 10 per month. In communities that have little money, survival is about social capital. You can solve problems together that you can't do alone. There are complementary currencies to achieve that as well. Like time dollars. It doesn't have any meaning to accumulate lots of time dollars, but the relationships you establish within the time dollars network are important, and local complementary currencies are very easy to start.